Hi everyone, this is my second video on white balance. In the last video, I discussed setting a, a baseline value, this 5,500 Kelvin value, to understand what the light's doing in your scene and talked about what white balance actually was and just touched on some of the problems that you might come across and why you might start moving those uh, settings. But in this video, I'm going to talk a lot more about editing and how it affects white balance. I'm going to talk about how adding contrast can cause problems if you have a strong color cast. I'm going to talk about how setting accurate white balance can really help to differentiate between colors, particularly when there's a strong color cast. I'm going to talk about some more creative choices that I might make, reasons why I might shift into different white balances, and uh, maybe a tip or two on how I make clouds look more dramatic, partly through the use of white balance. So let's get started. I'm going to start by talking about how color cast can become a real problem when you start adding contrast to your images, which of course is uh, something that many of us will do when we edit our shots. So we're going to use this one as an example, and I'm just going to darken down the exposure so that we can see the color of the image a little better. This was shot on uh, the Sony a7R2, so I've got a slightly warmer, uh, slightly more magenta tint here because that's about neutral on this camera. Um, but if we add a mass of contrast here, then everything becomes very blue. And the reason we'd add a lot of contrast is because we want to bring out these lovely textures in the snow and also see into the distance a, a little bit more. But if I go really extreme with this, uh, you can see that it, it induces a really, really strong blue tone to this image. All the subtlety is gone. So one way we can deal with this is by just desaturating the image and, and that starts to look uh, natural again. We've got a similar blue tone. But what you'll notice is that at the back, we've lost all of the subtlety that was coming through the cloud. So if I just undo those changes uh, very quickly, um, then you can see that we did have some nice uh, slight magenta, slightly warmer colors creeping through against that blue. And that's the kind of subtlety of color that I don't want to lose. So how do we handle that? Well, we have to adjust the white balance after we've added the contrast. And that's gonna help fight off the blue cast. So we're going to move these sliders in the opposite direction to the color of the cast. So let's add the contrast again. And this time, rather than desaturating, I'm going to add warmth to the image. And I'm going to stop roughly where it looks a nice natural blue, so that the blue cast is still there. But you can see now we've, we've still got those subtle, warmer colors just creeping through. And they are very subtle, but they will be totally destroyed if you have a strong color cast in the image, and particularly if you exaggerate it with contrast changes. And that's really a reason why you need to get the white balance right in the first place, because of course a color cast isn't just in the natural light, it can be uh, introduced artificially. Okay, so on to another example here. This is a shot taken in Greenland, and what I want to do is enhance the warmer light that is on the, the mountains at the back. So this was taken at twilight, but these spires here are lit by the warmth of the horizon. The sun has, has set, but there's still warmer tones on the horizon that uh, create these more subtle hues. So I want to bring those out, and one way to do that is to add contrast, but because we have a color cast, it makes everything a bit more blue. So much like before, I'm going to warm in the uh, opposite direction to the color cast. Um, so if hypothetically you had a magenta cast that you had to deal with and you're adding contrast and it was getting more magenta, then you would add green. But that's uh, a, a scenario you're, you're less likely to see. It's really these twilight blue shots that I tend to uh, see this problem with the most. And uh, we might want to brighten the, the water here um, and maybe do a bit, a bit of rebalancing. Um, and I don't want to turn this into a full on editing video, so I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. But uh, as I do these edits here, um, the water just looks excessively blue. So sometimes I will locally adjust the white balance to fight color casts that have become too strong with exactly the same principle. So I'm just warming this and I'm not trying to eliminate that uh, that blue altogether. I'm just trying to uh, take the kick out of it so that it doesn't look obscenely blue. 
Uh, because if you're looking at this yourself, of course, your eye would adjust to that blue fairly effectively. And this to me is now more like what I would see. And I'm just going to make a slight creative change here, which is to add a little bit of magenta in. It just gives it a slightly magical feel. I'd like to introduce a little bit of magenta from time to time with these twilight scenes. So that's, a, that's another example. Here, much like the first image, I want to bring out the, the colors that exist um, in, uh, in these uh, clouds here, these pinks and, and warmer tones. But we do have a relatively strong um, blue cast to the image. So as I add contrast, that blue gets stronger. So I'm just going to move this in the direction of warming it just to take some of the life out of those blues then maybe add a tiny, tiny bit of magenta. Because remember, any cast that we introduce here is only exaggerated by quite a strong contrast change there. And then finally, I'm just going to brighten it up to roughly the point that I would like. And I might, um, in, in Photoshop, make some uh, contrast changes here uh, with, the, with the Curves tool. Although, uh, for the sake of argument, I'll just do it in, uh, in Lightroom here. And uh, that gets me to a fairly finished point. So again, I've just used a warming uh, white balance change after the edit to fight off that, uh, that color cast from getting too strong. This one, same principle again, I'm just hammering home the same idea. So what I'd like to do is bring out a bit more texture in this cloud here. So I'm going to create a local adjustment to do that. I'm going to paint into this area here. And I'm going to add a mass of contrast and not worry too much about it at the moment. And uh, I'm just going to check that my white balance is, is fairly neutral. Yes, it is. So let's go in and just edit this change so that we don't exaggerate this blue too much. So again, we're going to just warm that adjustment. And you can see that blue just seeping away there. And then maybe dial back the adjustment a little bit, actually, because it's probably a bit too strong. Uh, and then, then my edit might continue with with this image. I mean, to be honest, I would work with this panel first, and you know, do do some highlights and, and shadows work first, adjust the overall contrast and and darken down the sky before I did those local changes. But uh, you get the idea, and uh, I suspect this one needs a bit of straightening as well. So that's uh, again using the white balance tools locally because I added contrast but I need to take that color out rather than desaturating I'm warming the white balance. Okay so here's a really specific um, edit. Uh, if you use a polarizer um, on a blue sky from time to time you can get problems where the colors start to shift hues. So they go from being quite fresh whites uh, to looking quite muddy and too warm and pink and those are not colors that you see in the clouds uh, naturally. So if I just um, add a mass of saturation here then you can see this more cl clearly. You can see yellows up here, peachy colors, oranges and uh, I really don't want any of those colors because this is bright daylight and those clouds really should be white. And you can see down in the foreground here that uh, some warmer colors have started to creep into the cloud and they, I don't know, that, that I find that color gross to be perfectly honest. I like my clouds to look fresh and my skies to look fresh. So this is actually an example where I kind of do a bit of a cheat to sort out the color in the sky here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just slightly cool down the white balance because I think that's going to benefit the image as a whole. It's going to help these clouds at the bottom look fresher and then I mean, you can actually uh, leave the saturation on so that you can see better what you're doing, but I can still see even without the saturation that this left hand corner of the image is warmer than that right hand side. And I don't like that imbalance of color. It could well be that the, the warm cliffs here are reflecting some light back into the cloud. I'm not exactly sure. But what I am gonna do is just drag a gradient here and I'm going to make a very subtle change to the white balance. And you can see now that it's a, it's a much more ple pleasing neutral gray, slightly cooler gray color. In fact, I might just take it one step further than that. So that process can then continue because I, I can see there's a, there's a warm uh, area here. So these are all very, very subtle adjustments that I'm making, but I just don't like this kind of muddiness that's going on with the greys there. So I am introducing a tiny bit of blue there as well. Now the sky is a complete nightmare. Um, we've got all of these uh, colour changes and I really want to get rid of the lot. Well, 
there is one very straightforward way of doing that and that's to drag a gradient over the sky, make it massively blue and then desaturate it. And this is actually going to give quite a, a natural result um, once, we, once we turn off that uh, massive saturation that we just added. And of course, this now looks maybe a little bit desaturated. So uh, let's just go back and uh, be a bit more sensible with our change there because I didn't like how it made this cloud really blue as well. So we can, uh, we can move it around and we can change the extent to which this adjustment is applied. So maybe not going quite as far and then adding a bit of contrast to help keep these clouds nice and bright and white. And you can see how I've just taken those rather insipid colors out of the sky, and yet it still looks lovely and blue. Um, maybe I'd just add a tad of green into this actually, just to um, just to counteract some of those, those uh, pinky colors that were creeping in. So that's a, a, an adjustment that I very rarely make, but it is useful to understand that the ability of uh, white balance to correct colors, and this is particularly useful with blue skies because you can kind of get away with this and it returns the scene to more what you would see with your eye. And then I'd, I'd carry on with, with my editing um, as, as normal, um, doing much the same as I, uh, as I showed you in the other edits. I did that the wrong way around. Uh, and uh, I'd probably target these clouds now locally to bring in more contrast and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the sky here is now looking uh, too bright. So uh, yeah, there's a bit of back and forth involved. Okay, uh, another creative example. So this was a, a beautiful sunrise in the Drakensberg, the sun spilling over the top of this cloud inversion. It really was quite spectacular to see. But I was also interested to photograph uh, this group of pinnacles here, and particularly when there was a bit of a, a change to the light that you can see here. So this is a zoomed in version of, of that scene from the, exactly the same location. And what I'm interested in is the sunlight on the right in contrast to the much colder tones of the shadowed cloud on the left. And I want to bring out that contrast, that color contrast as much as possible. And you can see by choosing to set a colder temperature here, we get a stronger sense of color contrast between the warmer side of the image and the colder side. So now if I add contrast or saturation, whatever I choose to do here, um, we have this lovely rich blue on the left and much warmer tones on the right, which are only going to get better um, when we, in fact, let's not do it that way. Let's, uh, let's darken the highlights and, and lift the shadows like I normally would. And then maybe do some local targeting of this top corner. And you can see that you, you start to create an absolutely stunning color contrast between the sunlit lit area of the cloud and this bluer area to the left. So that's a, a creative way of using white balance um, to, to introduce a new meaning to an image, uh, which of course again is, is very, very rare um, that you'll find a use for it, but uh, just to give you an option there. So this one I've just introduced just to talk about why I might occasionally add some magenta. Obviously I did in, in a previous image, uh, but because we've got the belt of Venus here, um, I might, after doing most of, most of my edits here, um, I might decide to add a bit of magenta to the top portion of the image just to make the absolute most of the uh, of the color that's creeping into the sky there. Let's darken down the exposure. So you can see I'm, artificially introducing just a little bit of color here. I don't feel like it's disingenuous because you have this lovely luminous quality to those pinks when you're actually stood there. Uh, so that's an example of, of again, using the uh, white balance tools to add something to an image. And then finally, I'm going to talk about a trick that I use commonly on clouds. So when I have uh, dark, contrasty, structured clouds like this, I like them to look wild and dramatic. And an obvious way to, to do that is to just add some contrast. And in fact, I would choose to do that with this anyway, because I kind of want this line to just become a, a silhouette. And uh, I'm going to darken down these highlights because they're just a bit too much and maybe add a, a bit more contrast. But I really want to have this scene looking as wild as possible. And in that case, I quite like to cool down the white balance just slightly. So I'm not making the sky blue. 
I'm just making the grey a blue-grey because to me that feels colder, it feels more oppressive and that's an atmosphere that I almost always want to introduce when I have these dark clouds above. It also has the double benefit of creating a bit of colour separation and a sense of depth because cool colours tend to recede so um, as you look into the distance atmospheric haze uh, tends to take on a blue colour so we have this perception of depth that is associated with the colour blue. Uh, bluer things tend to recede into the distance so you can kind of use it to create a sense of depth um, in, uh, in landscape photographs and bring the foreground uh, towards the viewer. So in this case, um, in fact, let's uh, let's go through a quick edit on this uh, just so that you can see at what stage I would actually be making the edit. So again, highlights and shadows just to rebalance the exposure. I'm going to add quite a lot of contrast here and I'm going to boost the exposure. So I'm mostly looking at the foreground uh, and then I'm going to darken the whole top portion of the image and maybe add a bit more contrast as well because I really want to see the structure in those clouds and this has the, the nice effect actually of making the mountain darker which I think adds to the ominous feel of that mountain but finally I'm just going to add some blue into the sky so I don't need to add much because I've added quite a lot of contrast and that's going to amplify the temperature change but that now for me creates a beautiful colour contrast that is subtle enough that it doesn't look artificial but just helps the image along the way and, and recreates that sense of drama in the scene. And finally, um, this image also from Iceland of this lovely deltered river. So again, I'll just do a very, very quick edit, darken the highlights, boost the shadows, um, add some more contrast. You can see I repeat the same adjustments um, quite regularly and obviously I do it in a slightly more refined way when, I, uh, when I'm doing this for myself. But since we're talking about uh, this cloud adjustment here, I'm going to uh, create a, a darkening exposure change to the top portion of the image and add some contrast. I'm really looking at bringing out these structures in the cloud and then I'm going to cool down that temperature again, just very slightly. If you go too far, then it just looks really, really weird. So you have to be very, very careful with these changes. I mean, certainly you don't want clouds to look warm because to me, uh, they, they just lose their, their sense of threat, but they also become kind of distracting and they look unnatural to me somehow. So uh, certainly better to keep them on the cool side and maybe I would locally uh, darken down this right hand side of the image just to redress the, the balance from, from right to left and you could even uh, lighten the other side. So the, that's how I use uh, cooling adjustments on the uh, the top portion, the clouds in an image quite commonly and uh, hopefully these are all tips that you'll be able to take forward into your own edits, uh, the creative ideas certainly, but especially understand this problem with colour casts and adding contrast. It's really, really important. I saw somebody on YouTube literally yesterday, somebody linked me to somebody butchering an image on YouTube because they decided that they were going to enhance the colours of sunrise, added a massive warming adjustment and a load of contrast and it destroyed all of the little blue patches of sky between the, uh, the orange clouds. So do be very careful um, when you start adding contrast that you're not making these colour casts worse and if you found this content helpful then please do subscribe to my channel um, and uh, and comment below because uh, that helps uh, my images become uh, my videos become visible but it also uh, helps me stay motivated and uh, the interaction is actually helpful because it can uh, give me ideas for, for new content for new videos that you guys might find helpful